Welcome back everyone, Professor Cameron here. Now we've had a few requests for uh, generating CAM profiles for holes. So we're going to go ahead and run through that. Now what we have here is a block with three common holes in it. We have just a quarter inch uh, drill through hole, a quarter twenty tapped hole, and then a quarter inch hole that has been counterboard for a screw head. So let's go ahead, we'll run, we'll run through uh, setting this up and generating the CAM toolpath profiles for all of these. So we're going to first start this by uh, defining our machine, setting up our stock manager, setting up our coordinate systems, going through all the stuff that we would normally do for any other part. So let's go ahead and define our machine. We're going to use our mill in inches. And we can go ahead and select OK. We're then going to set our coordinate system. And this is going to depend on how you want to set up and zero your part. We'll go ahead and set it up in this corner with our X, Y, and Z axes accordingly. Again, this is going to depend on your specific machine, but most three axes machines are going to be set up in a similar uh, arrangement to what we have here. Let's go ahead and choose our stock manager size, or our stock size. Now this is just a test piece, so we're not going to do anything fancy with our stock size. Just the default units that I have this model to of 4 inches by 1 inch by 1 inch should be fine. We're going to go ahead and choose setup. Now this is going to depend on how we want to orient our part in the vise. And essentially what this is doing is how CamWorks recognizes the features to mill. We want to drill these holes, so we're going to select this surface here that is perpendicular to those holes. We're going to go ahead and select OK. Now what we have to do here is to extract machinable features. What I like to do is just work my way from, right, uh, from left to right. We're going to generate the operations plan and then generate the toolpaths. And what it does is by default it will go through and choose what it feels is the best um, order of operations for this. Now, a lot of the time this actually works out pretty well. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through, we're going to talk about these, and then we're going to go through and actually add these in manually. So with any drilling operation, but particularly when you get into fine uh, diameter drill bits, uh, we want a center drill. And essentially what that's doing is putting a little dimple in the surface of the part and giving that drill bit a place to catch so that it doesn't wander around on the part. Um, this is especially more important when you're doing harder materials like steels. Uh, that drill bit has a tendency to walk a little bit more than it does in softer materials. So what it's going to do is it's going to center drill, put a little peck in there. It's going to drill that hole. And that's all we need for this operation right here. Next hole, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to put that little center drill in. It's going to go through and drill it just like the first hole, and then it's going to run through with a quarter 20 tap. The third hole, we're going to center drill, we're going to drill, and then it's putting in what looks like a few contour mills, and then a countersink operation. Now, realistically, we don't need these last two operations. We can get by with just this one contour mill, and that's how we're going to go ahead and generate this, but let's go ahead and go through how to add these all in manually. So I'm just going to choose a new mill setup. Just back to where we were before. Let's see. Let's go ahead and let's counter drill, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, spot drill these three holes. So let's go ahead. Go to two and a half axis feature. Now what we need to do is to have it recognize those holes. So we're going to go through, we're going to select the edges of these holes here. We're going to go to end condition. Sorry. We want hole operation for type. Go to end condition. And then we are going to choose up to face. And we're going to go ahead and drill those all the way down to the bottom. So 
So now we have our three holes. And hole five here I'm actually going to have to edit, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. So let's go ahead. For hole three, let's go ahead and add in a hole machining operation. And we're going to add in a center drill. We can choose whichever center drill tool that we happen to have in our tool crib. I'm going to go ahead and choose this quarter inch 90 degree countersink. And for my features, I'm going to have it do all three holes. We'll adjust the settings afterwards. I just want to get the tool paths in. So let's go ahead and generate, nope, not generate operations plan. We'll generate that tool path. And then we'll simulate this. So what this should do is just come along and dot each of those holes. And that's what it's doing. It's drilling all the way down because we have to adjust those parameters. So that looks fine. We'll fiddle with that later. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to drill all three of these uh, with a drill bit. Now, uh, the tap hole is going to require a different drill bit. So we're going to do uh, hole number one and hole number three. We're going to go through, we're going to add a hole machining operation and we're going to add a drill. We're going to find, we should have, a quarter inch drill bit. And I'm not seeing it, so I'm going to go to add new. Go to drill, and then we're going to choose our drill bit diameter, 0.25, right there. We're going to go to features, we're going to select hole 1 and hole 5 in this case. As I said, this hole here requires a different uh, drill bit. It actually requires a smaller drill bit because of that tapped feature. We're going to select OK. We'll fiddle with these parameters later. Generate that toolpath. Simulate. It's the three pecs. Drill. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in that drill operation for this hole. Now, for a quarter 20 tapped hole, you require a number 7 drill bit, which I believe off the top of my head comes out to about 0.201 diameter. So let's go ahead and add that hole operation in. We're going to go and choose a number 7 drill bit. And let's see if I was correct here. Oh, look at that. Right on the nose. And then for feature, we just want to drill this center hole here. That looks good. We'll fiddle with these parameters later. Generate that toolpath. Simulate. Spot, 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 drill, drill, and then we change out the tool for that one. Very good. So let's go ahead and we'll thread this hole here. We're going to go ahead, hole machining operation, tap, quarter 20 UNC cutting tap, which is what I have this hole spec'd out to. We're going to go to features. We're going to choose that hole. Select OK. Now, a lot of the times you won't be tapping uh, automatically, uh, unless you're set up for it with a tapping head. Um, that would be a little bit more industrial of a manufacturing setup. Um, if you're making one or two of these and you're in a smaller home shop, you're more than likely going to tap these by hand, so you would leave this tapping operation out. But we'll go ahead, click OK on this, we'll fiddle with the, those settings later. Generate that toolpath, and we'll go ahead and simulate this. I like to simulate after each step, just to make sure that uh, it's doing what I expect it to. I'm not getting too far into the model uh, before I realize something's wrong. Perfect. 
So we've got this whole set, we've got this whole set. Now all we have left to do is to put in the um, counter bore operation. Now you can use a counter bore bit for this, um, or you can mill it out. I'm going to choose to mill this feature out. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to add in a two and a half axis milling operation and a rough mill. We're going to choose our feature here and we're going to create a new feature. We're going to select that lip and our end condition is going to be up to surface or up to face. That's going to be that face there because that's all we want to mill out. We can go ahead and select OK. It's recognized that as a new circular pocket. We can go ahead and select OK. By default, it shows a quarter inch end mill. That should be fine. Uh, we can go ahead and live with that. So let's go ahead and generate, uh, let's generate that toolpath, simulate, spot, 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 drill, 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 tap, and then that boring operation. And that looks great. So that's the gist of it. Now, what we can do is we can go ahead and edit these settings. So for our center drill, we're going to edit that definition. Our feeds and speeds. Our feeds for the center drill, or our spindle speed, is not terribly important. Um, we're going to assume that we're using high-speed steel in aluminum. Uh, I have another video on how to set speeds and feeds. Uh, for this, I'm going to use drilling speeds. So let's go ahead and set our spindle speed to 2500 RPM. And our Z feed rate, I like to keep that slow, about two and a half. Uh, two to three should be fine. For center drill, what we're doing is we're spot drilling this. And the dwell time is how long it spends actually in the material. Now, again, that's going to depend on the material you use, your tool material. Uh, but one second should be fine. That's actually a little bit long, but for what we're doing, it's not going to be a huge deal. NC plane. I always like to have my NC plane set to top of stock, and I like to keep it at about 100 thousand. That's the clearance plane that the tool travels above the part. Um, I like to give myself a little bit of room there. For feature options, what we're going to want to do is adjust the depth here. So we're going to choose the manual depth override. And we're going to set our machining depth small. We're going to set it pretty narrow because this is just to create a little peck in that surface. It doesn't have to be in there super deep. We can set this to about 25 thousandths. and that should be fine. We can go ahead and select OK on that. Our drilling operations, these are going to be pretty much identical. So we're going to run through and set these both up. I'll set it up for the quarter inch, and then we're just going to copy those settings over to the uh, number seven. So for our feeds and speeds, Again, this is going to dictate, uh, depend on the drill diameter that you happen to be using. It's going to depend on the material um, and your drill uh, material choice. But we're going to go ahead and set this to 2,500. Drill hole parameters. Now, when you're drilling any hole, but particularly deeper holes, you want to peck the material. And essentially what that does is rather than taking the drill bit and jamming it straight through the part, it's going to come in and do a little bit at a time. It's going to peck it slightly deeper each time. Your peck amount and your dwell time, which we talked about, is how much time it spends at the bottom of the hole. Those are going to depend on cutting conditions like material, uh, whether you're using coolant, uh, drill bit diameter. We can go ahead and leave this at 100 thou and zero dwell time right now. NC plane, 
Just like our last setup, I like to set these both to top of stock in 100 thou. In feature options, this is where we have the option to include tip length. Now, as we all know when we've looked at a drill bit, it's got a point to it, and that is going to leave a subsequent point in our material. Now, if we're going to be going ahead and drilling in material that we're going to face off afterwards, right? Let's say this is our thickness of our material. And we want it to drill all the way through, and we're going to cut this bottom half off. Well, this hole is not going to poke through because of the tapering of the tip. So what we'll want to do is to add this tip length to our drill hole diameter. So that way when we face this off, we have a full diameter hole on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and include tip length. And then we can go ahead and select OK. And we're going to do that same setup to the number 7 drill. Feeds and speeds are going to be the same. Packing is going to be the same. And C plane, top of stock, point one for each. And then we're going to include that tip length. For our tap, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, like I said, this would be only if you have a tapping head. Uh, spindle speeds for tapping. This is where you're going to have to play around with it. Um, this is going to be dictated by the type of tapping head that you're using, by um, the type of tap that you're using. In general, um, slower is better. I like to treat tapping a lot like I do reaming. So we're going to slow this down to about 80. RPM. For tapped hole parameters, we're not going to have any dwell time. We're going to be doing a tapping operation. And C plane is going to be the same. Top of stock, 100 thou. Feature options. Add tip length or not to add tip length. Again, this is going to be dependent on the type of tap that you have. If you're using something like a bottoming tap, you may not have to add tip length. If you're using something like a starting tap or an in-between tap, you may choose to do that. Again, um, with taps, you're usually not going to get a full tap length uh, in relation to your hole length. So if you're adding tip length, I would not add um, tip length to the tap, just to give you a little bit of buffer room in there. Um, again, we have ways to solve you know, full thread taps in our models. We can go ahead and make our hole longer than we actually need to. Uh, but that's a topic for another video. But for now, I'm going to leave tip length off. And then finally, for our counter bore. We're going to go ahead, set our spindle speeds to the spindle speed for a quarter inch drill bit, or a quarter inch end mill high-speed steel in aluminum, which should come out to 4,800 RPM. Feed rate. Um, when you're doing small operations like this, particularly when you're doing holes, I like to slow my feed rate down because it's kind of herky-jerky on the machines. Uh, you got the weight of the ways, you've got the weight of the vise. That's a lot of weight to be thrown around really quickly. So we'll typically slow this down to about 10 or less. Roughing, we're not going to go ahead and do a finish pass on this. We can, uh, if you want to program that in afterwards. But I'm going to assume that we're not, so we're going to set our allowance to zero. First and max cut amount. These are generally 10% of your tool diameter. For NC plane, just like our last setup, top of stock, 100 thou. And that should be all we need to set up in here. So this all looks good. 
let's go ahead and simulate this. Just check, make sure we have everything looking good. So come through. That's drilling a little deep. Let's go ahead and investigate why that's drilling deep on those first two holes. That looks good otherwise, so let's go ahead and take a look at this center drill operation. I'm not seeing anything that would cause it to go ahead and plunge through there. Let's check that. Yeah, it looks like it is. Interesting. I'll have to go through and address that in my code. If it's giving you this same issue, go ahead and let me know. I know I have had some issues with my SolidWorks recently. Um, but if it is, go ahead and leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll see what I can do to it. But if you guys have any other questions on drilling operations or if there's anything you'd like to see that I haven't covered, go ahead, let me know, leave me a comment, and I will catch you guys in the next video.